All right, everyone. Today we're going to be doing a brake uh, replacement of uh, rotor and pads on this 17 edge titanium. Nothing crazy about the car itself other than a few minor cosmetic mods, but your standard setup for an edge, um, minus, of course, the sport package that those of you who have had the 15 through 18 generation may be familiar with. A couple of color accents and different set of wheels, still uh, factory just color coded. So we'll see how that goes. As a usual safety precaution, make sure that you blocked off your wheels, front and back. The right jack placement. In this case, we're gonna start with rear passenger side rear there's supposed to be at least on my edge it's kind of hard to see here on the frame on, on the steel part there there should be an arrow as you can see an arrow pointing left and an arrow pointing right in between is where we're going to line up our jack to bring the car up the ever important question of size of lug nuts so even though these wheels were a bit of an upgrade, they're still um, factory technically wheeled, but the lugs were the same from the day the car was bought. So what you could, you could get away potentially with a 22, 22 millimeter socket, but notice the amount of play. There's doesn't seem like that much, but considering the kind of torque and pressure applied on when you're trying to undo, but never mind when you're trying to tighten these, you probably ought to consider something more snug fitting. In this case, that's a 21. Uh, that fits much better, no bait or almost no play whatsoever. So that's what we're going to use on this edge 21 um, millimeter size socket. Also goes without saying, but before you fully jack up the car, make sure that you've loosened the lug nuts first, considering the downward pressure you're applying to undo the lug nuts. You don't want the jack under the car, <clears throat> the car moving around potentially from the force you're applying, plus maybe some of that steel stuff slightly bending under there. So before the jack is fully engaged, loosen the lug nuts, then start jacking the car up. All right, our passenger side rear wheel is off. Here's our hub. It looks slightly different if you haven't already seen it. Just so happens that we have a six millimeter spacer on here that obviously is not factory. We decided to go with that um, earlier on for additional wheel clearance. Honestly, just thinking that maybe might add a little bit to the only a little bit to the stance of the car but actually this will also come in handy based on a additional little mod that we're going to do as part of this brake changeover the actual hub looks like this the rotor is in this case is pretty jacked up which is why we're changing the rotor and changing the pads while we're at it let's get to it so so what's going to end up coming out well just for the sake of it not getting in the way and reduce any chance of resistance from parts. Just using a screwdriver and some manipulation, we're gonna pop out this little metal clip type deal that's holding part of the caliper assembly in place. So we're gonna pop that out. Then what we also are going to have to do is we're going to go after this bolt and one just like it below underneath um, so that we can detach the part that's holding the caliper from the rest of the assembly. Now quick note here that there's a cap holding or hiding the screw so the cap needs to get popped off using probably a screwdriver or something like that so you can get to the screw that's inside of there so that you can then undo it and have this come out and ultimately make the part holding the pads loose 
just again remember there's one just like it underneath here then once we're done with that part we actually have to remove the entire caliper or not remove it but loosen it break it away using this screw and that one down there that you see so that this entire thing ends up lifting up from the assembly so that you can essentially take this whole caliper and the rest of it and lift it off and almost like a clamshell. We're not detaching any hoses. Make sure that no hoses are overstretched, accidentally disconnected or anything like that. That's an entire other set of issues. We don't want to touch any of these hoses that have Fomoco labels on them or any of that. We essentially just want to loosen this up, lift it off of the, the um, rotor and hub and then get after it. Having removed the cover, safe, safety, whatever you want to call it, caps from this part, here's what those things look like. You know, it's just like a little plastic safety cap, but at the same time, make sure you do not lose this thing. They're a pain in the ass to replace, find in stock, no matter what your dealer tells you they do or do not have. So there should be two of these set them aside one of the other frustrating parts is sometimes again trying to find out the right sizes of tools needed so the screw that's buried inside of this this rubber sheath that we need to remove actually requires an allen type of key and not only that but based on the force with which it's in there you're not going to be able to just use your typical screwdriver no surprise there so what you really need is one of these socket wrench attachments and sizing for this particular one is a seven as you can see there and what we're going to do is ensure that it is a fit and in fact it's nice and snug and like i said just be very mindful of any brake lines or any of the hoses leading up to it but it's a perfect fit it's a seven and then of course we're going to do the exact same thing down on the bottom one quick heads up depending on the size of your socket wrench and the size of the socket wrench head there's this butt out here from one of the parts that may interfere with the socket wrench so just make sure you finagle that carefully to not strip your allen wrench or do something with this part to address that problem we decided to use an extender so extender to the allen wrench atta attachment to the socket wrench so the next size of importance now that we've loosened up the bolt that was holding the uh, brake pad assembly now we need to loosen up the tougher ones that are part of holding on the entire caliper assembly. These guys are going to be, after a couple of trial and error attempts, a size 15. Here is where it gets a little bit more frustrating potentially because you have to play around with the length of the socket based on the room that you have all back there to get to this bolt with the right kind of wrench and then get to that bolt further down there. Uh, chances are you're going to need to use a breaker bar because of the kind of force that was applied to attach this whole assembly safely. Um, so just be very mindful of that and make, again make sure you're not messing with any of these hoses or any of the lines that may be in the way of this bolt and that bolt down there removal. Breaker bar a long thingy designed to apply a maximum force based on the length of its shaft. Kind of a pain in the butt to try to get inside the wheel shaft or wheel well to move around with. So you gotta be very careful with it. But if you have the patience, this will break just about any tightened screw out there. 
To be clear, when we say break a screw, we don't mean physically break it. We mean break the stronghold that would be otherwise impossible to loose. We're using standard wrenches or um, standard force. So here's what a breaker bar looks like with a 15 millimeter attachment on it. Have to be careful so that you don't mess up the paint. Apply both hands and gently apply pressure to eventually loosen the pressure of that bolt. The one on the bottom is going to probably be a tougher gig. All right, mission accomplished. We got the caliper holding screw or screws loose and ensuring that they are out of the socket so that they're not in the way. There's that one. Then there's the other one and then we got these knuckle screws out of there here's what they look like and now lo and behold this whole thing is jiggly and loose now may be as good as time as any to mention that you do not want to have your parking brake on you need to have it off which is why so that the brake is not so tightened around the back that you can't remove the assembly but obviously that's why we've locked the wheels off in the first place so we're having removed the whole deal we have this whole entire giant clam with a brake cylinder and the pads that we're going to get rid of and then down there we took it down is that bracket that was holding the assembly in place against the wheel assembly it got taken off so now we can get to the pads and to the rotor. Very important though, what has to happen first and foremost before doing anything else, when you remove this assembly, since we did not touch any of the hoses, do not put any pressure on the hoses. Do not let this assembly dangle by the hoses to risk any disconnection or fracture or breaks. Figure out a way so that it can be either safely kind of partly rested on top of the hub or maybe um, improvise and hang it or have it suspended by some type of a hook against um, you know one of the shocks or something like that but bottom line is make sure none of the hoses are kinked stretched or pulled on when you are messing with this very very important here we decided to improvise by using bungee cord and sort of flipping over and laying the caliper assembly down making sure again the lines are not stressed or overstretched and just kind of attached it to the torsion bar and maybe even the spring while we work on this awful rudder assembly before that here's a quick peek at the brake pads that just came out of there. I mean, these things were fused basically over. That's how bad of a shape these things were in. I mean, we're talking 35 or so thousand miles on this thing, on this car, but it is driven relatively aggressively. Like there's a, even a friggin' gouge in one of the brake pads. So nothing like the present to make sure that we're getting these changed all proper. Here's our removed rotor that is in desperate need of replacement. Look at this thing. Kind of looks like something that maybe came off of a World War II Sherman tank. I mean, this thing, I'm frankly was kind of su surprised that we were able to take it off of the assembly without having to use some serious hammering maybe we got lucky there but needless to say this is going in the trash and we're going with a replacement so here's what we went with for purposes of replacement it's a set of stop for the rears set of stop techs sport rotor slotted installation ready finish um anyway here's the part number uh, for those who are interested this is for the right hand side and of course it's counterpart for the left hand side unboxing these things is going to give us something more interesting to look at i'm sure it's going to be there we go 
thank goodness for 57 stickers always good for that and then here is what's inside let's try to get this guy out of here even comes with a handy R to remind you what side that's going to go under of course the question is well R which it depends if you're looking at the car from the front or the rear which is the right which is the left well there's definitely a way to tell that and consult your installation manual uh, just because there's a still a school of thought out there that the direction of the slotted parts has to be run a certain way and people still argue over it i'm not going to waste any time on that Long story short, here is B4 with all the fun leftover rust. Here's after. Nice slotted black hat for the match. No rust, of course, on the interior. Yay. And again, we decided to go with slotted, not because we're tracking this car, but because we drive it relatively aggressively and we feel we can get some performance gains out of it. So our next step is to put it all right back on the way we just took things off and go from there. Here is the rotor, the rear right rotor mounted on the edge. There's what it is going to look like before we put on any of the other stuff, before we put any of it back. Looks pretty good. And this is what we went with for brake options for the rears. The EBC brakes, your friendly neighborhood EBC people, premium street, performance plus race. I'm not sure that that would apply ever in this case, but you never know. Eco-friendly brakes, definitely clutch. And I'm being sarcastic. And um, here is the before pad. Just shot to, you know what, beyond belief. Here is what's coming in, in its place, which is pretty cool. And hopefully not only provides low brake dust but actually noticeable stopping power we had good experience with these things in the past on other cars so we're going with them again and then here's the counterpart again just worn to smithereens and here is its replacement coming in um, and of course what's good about EBC as well is that they give you these handy brackets already that you can apply as well. Um, they also attach with their kit or include with their kit the EBC caliper lube um, just like it says right there to apply to the slider screw that they're talking about is this guy and then its counterpart underneath that we're holding the caliper to this assembly which we'll probably revisit that when it comes time to it and then we've just invested a while back into some disc brake quiet so that it can be applied to the bracket um, to make sure that when a high frequency vibrations and caliper compression during brake is happening that it reduces the chances of squeal but just like that little packet from ABC said it's very important and actually not just for some of these various goos that you could apply but just in general when you're touching the rotor and when you're touching those brake pads make sure whatever you do that you're not using gloves that have grease on them some kind of sprays some kind of um, rust proof spray or any of the goo that gets applied ends up on there or otherwise you risk potentially jacking up your braking power as part of the 
reassembly, what we're actually going to do is put the bracket on first and the associated screws. Make note that even from factory, it comes, it has this blue stuff on it, the blue thread locker that ensures that these things don't shake loose with all the vibrations of the brake assembly, <clears throat> but at the same time, also in a way, fulfilling the function of ensuring they don't permanently seize. So kind of hard to tell from this worn out one, but we're actually going to use the, our own to reapply and make sure that it stays. As part of the install process, we actually are doing the bracket first because it's going to become critical for us to ensure that the new brake pads that are thicker fit inside, of course, this key part. Those of you who have done this before know what I'm talking about. Please make a note that for Ford Edge, the brake cylinder, as you can see there by these grooves, in order to retract it, you actually have to twist it, not compress it. So you have to twist this thing clockwise while applying pressure to be able to retract that rubber part of the cylinder back in enough so that the new brake pads can fit on both sides of the rotor over the bracket. And um, we certainly have a set of tools specifically for this, but I know others have done wrenches and things like that. Just please, again, be mindful of not inducing any damage onto that part. Again, if you do nothing, you will not be able to fit new brake pads into here. Take a look at some other manuals or videos out there for brake pad replacement, because as part of the strategy, it will also make sense to go into the engine bay and open up the lid to the brake coolant um, vessel so that any pressure induced by compressing the cylinder back in can be relieved. Again, the other part we're of course not doing as well is the bleeder valve and some of those other things that maybe a dealer would consider doing. We're not necessarily doing here. I'm not getting into debates about what should or should not be done. This is for basic application. And there it is. Setup complete. And next thing normally would be to put on the wheel and drive around, but we have more to go. Yep, we went the extra route of the MGP caliper cover just because the wife's car has got like pink thing going on plus it's to honor a lost family member so looks pretty cool uh, if you have not seen it check out my video where we talk about MGP caliper cover versus CCI as one of the comparisons but for this case we still decided to stick with MGP so now we come to the part of the front brakes. We're looking right now at the front left, and it's a little bit different, a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, as you can see, the clip here that has to get removed as part of the process is a different one than the more basic one in the back. Also, those of you who have at least the 17 titanium possibly 15 to 18, but please consult the manufacturer or website specs. The size of this rotor on the front is 13.6 inches. Some places rounded that off to 14, but when you go to order replacement rotors or pads or some other parts, you frequently get asked by third-party websites, what is the front rotor size? Um, and I think there's there are at least a couple of choices you're typically given. So this is a 13.6, which uh, the diameter of this whole thing. Um, again, all I'm saying is on the 17 edge that we are currently working on, that's the size. I can't speak for 15, 16, or 18 before the body style change, but 17 titanium non-sport package 13.6 fun fact about ford and yet again thank you ford for the usual inconsistency although you could argue bigger brakes bigger parts 18 inch as opposed to the 15 that we were doing before 
bigger, maybe bigger because bigger brakes on the front, but the size of the knuckles here, the size of these two screws that need to get loosened up to take the entire assembly off are not 15, they're actually 18 on a 17 titanium. So we're gonna go with that. More fun facts about front of the edge. Two, not one piston brake caliper. So you actually have to press both cylinders back to get the both brake pads in there. Um, here is the brake view, brake pad view that is. Here's our one, certainly much more massive of a two piston brake pad. Not to mention the one in the rear where you have these prongs that end up catching inside the two cylinders, which is where you gotta make sure the fitment is exact and retract those two by actually pushing as opposed to twisting like what we experienced with the rears. Additionally, we are dealing with the fact that the releasing screws for the bracket, and I'm talking these guys that we previously have released on the rears, are significantly larger. Um, we're talking either a number 10, potentially 3 8, maybe even an 11 um, Allen wrench, which we don't actually have, but we're gonna attempt to use a 10 if we have to, but in, in, that's why we removed the entire clamshell here without having to remove just the bracket separately from the caliper and hope that that's going to do it, but definitely much larger than the rears. So for the fronts, this is what we're working with. We got the factory corroded to all heck as usual. There it is. Vented, yeah, great, but rusted fairly significantly and rusted to be Jesus on the inside. And then this time, unlike the rears, we didn't go stop tech. We went EBC simply because, and this seems like an OCD thing, the black hat wanted to make sure that the black hats continue to remain throughout the car. StopTech only had black hats for the rears available at the time and um, aluminum on the front wanted to remain with that consistency. Those of you that have had EBCs before, these are EBC slotted. They look black on the disc part, but that is just temporary. That entire black will rub right off after the first drive and actually will turn to standard silver but the black hat will remain regardless of the drive. So that's what we're looking forward to. Again, there's our vented section and the back part of the slotted rotor. The mounting for this, the philosophy here, um, may or may not be different from StopTech. Again, check consult the manufacturer website as far as which direction things ought to be in, but this one clearly indicates left. If you're not sure, as seen from previous demonstration, left means you're looking from the top of the car with the front facing forward, left is on the left-hand side, driver side. Or really, they could have simplified that. Left is on the driver side, no matter which side you look at from the car. So that's the part we're working with right now. That's what we're going to mount. Again, what's interesting is that the sweeping of the slots on this disc are, seem to be in the opposite direction of the rears for stop tech that we did. Different engineering, different philosophy, whatever, so long as it works. So here it is in the front wheel well. Notice again the slots sweeping the opposite direction of the rotation. Unlike the rears, where the direction is actually seemingly the opposite. But again, different manufacturer, stop tech versus EBC. And again, these are the fronts. EBC precision brake rotors, model number this one, black color, obviously. The f one of them is already mounted. And here's the other one that's coming up for the right-hand side. Again, 13.6 vented. Front brake pad Aww. specs, EBC, same red yeah. stuff, and the model number. Side by side, what? factory, Frank's son, Mike. EBC. The, guy, he was at yeah. the, party. He was the ones that clip into the pistons, regulars, 
for the other side. Random entertaining story during our install, hopefully for you all, certainly it wasn't for me though. Uh, when we were reassembling everything back together, one of the genius things that ended up happening was took our six millimeter spacer here and somehow ended up actually having it on the hub behind the rotor. Seemingly not a big deal considering the thickness, who cares? Except somehow without even noticing it, not only did that throw off the alignment of the rotor, but the car literally could not even move two feet. So we ended up having to move it just a little bit out of the way to do some, get some other things done, get our other car out of the driveway. But in the process, of course, ended up jacking up a little bit of the rotor. I don't believe that it's anything driving impacted uh, by this um, caliper bracket. So anyway, point is, be very careful, account for all your parts, and always ensure that you have free spin of the wheel and that everything's mounted and does not look crooked. One other tip that at least I figured out to be helpful for my purposes was specifically for the front brakes. Taking off the original caliper and brackets and putting them back on is a bit more of a struggle, as we talked about, as opposed to the rears. So my recommendation is to do the, when you install the caliper bracket holder, whatever you want to call it, to do the front pad first and actually put it into the spot. And then when it comes time to taking the main clamshell and putting it over here, you have the rear pad that clips in to the cylinders, but wrapping that around the pad that's already here. Otherwise you're gonna be stuck finagling a heavy piece and trying to get this into this bracket correctly, especially based on the fact that you have this kind of protruding shape of this pad that's going to conflict with the caliper holder. So just as a, as a thought, do as you wish. Here's our end result. After two days of driving, the black of the rotor, of the front EBC rotors wore off as predicted. Not surprising and that's normal. And then our stop techs, harder to tell anything happening there. But again, we've gone through the break-in period. I would recommend reading up on how to properly break in your rotors and new pads to make sure that they take proper.